With that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin our conference by inviting Yang Burbahagia, Dato' Muhammad Azra Nashim, Chairman Labuan IBFC Inc., to deliver his welcome remarks. I'd just like to acknowledge uh, Mr. Daniel Ma, the Director General of the Labuan Financial Services Authority, Mr. Raymond Wong, the Chairman of the Labuan International Insurance Association, distinguished speakers and delegates, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just uh, say it gives me great pleasure, and indeed it's an honour, to welcome all of you to this, uh, what we like to think a landmark, is a landmark event of Labuan IBFC, the Asian Captive Conference 2018. And this year, themed challenges of self-insurance, transparency and digital disruption. I'm indeed, I'm pleased to note that the conference is running for its second year. And this conference is a joint effort between the Labuan International Insurance Association and the Labuan IBFC Incorporated, uh, which in turn is the official marketing and promotion arm of the Labuan International Business and Financial Center, or otherwise known as Labuan IBFC. Now, for those of you who were here last year, you would recall the primary aim of this conference when it was first mooted was to create a platform for Asian corporates to come together and better understand the possibilities and benefits of self-insurance, specifically captives that could change the way risks are being managed. Needless to say, the response was overwhelming, and we thank those who have supported us. And today, one year on, we gather again at the same place, not only with several familiar faces, I must say, but also with refreshingly many new participants. So welcome to you all once again. I'm also pleased to add that we have not deviated from our key objectives, but this year we aim to bring you more focused content relevant in this age of new technology and transparency. My special thanks to the Labuan International Insurance Association for your great partnership and cooperation to co-host the conference again and of course to all our key sponsors, primarily Principal Re Limited, as mentioned, AM Best, and Excel Caitlin. Caitlin. Thank you also to all the other sponsors and partners for your contributions in making this conference a success. We're also proud to have with us representatives from regional risk management associations, such as the Pan-Asia Risk and Insurance Management Association, the Malaysian Association of Risk and Insurance Management, Risk and Insurance Management Association of Singapore and Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association, all here with us today. We have a truly Asian representation here today, and we have come together as a community to discuss self-insurance and risk mitigation as a group. Clearly, your representation here is very, very important to us. And additionally, our sincerest gratitude to our distinguished lineup of speakers and panelists who have taken the time to participate in this conference. I think this survey is not indicative, actually, just now. I think people just were a bit slow in, 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 in voting for the reasons that they came to this conference. Now, ladies and gentlemen, technology is part and parcel of our daily lives today. And I think we got a good idea of that just now. Baby boomers, I was saying here in my speech like us, but it looks like baby boomers like me, uh, perhaps have had to learn how to use a smartphone in our early 30s or perhaps 40s. But clearly, for those in generations X, Y, and Z, they're already very well acquainted with using not only a mobile phone, but various types of technology devices. With the help of globalization, technology continues to advance, especially in today's fast-paced business environment. Inevitably, this creates a business environment that is not only full of potential benefits, but also fraught with risks. Reports and studies released in recent years have repeatedly highlighted the use, the need rather, highlighted the need to understand and manage risks related to, to technology, such as cybersecurity threats and breaches that have caused businesses to spend a sizable chunk of their resources in first understanding and then mitigating such risks. In fact, the Allianz Risk Barometer 2018 business, as well as World Economic Forum's Global Risk Reports 2018, in partnership with Marsh and McLennan companies, revealed 
that cyber incidents are indeed a major threat for companies through 2018 and beyond. One such notable example of a large-scale cyber incident is the WannaCry ransomware that disrupted numerous global telecommunications providers, energy companies, banks, and even government ministries. The self-replicating worm infected over 200,000 computers in 150 countries and caused an estimated US dollar one billion in damage in just its first four days. This shows the potential harm of fast-moving attacks that in turn call for businesses to manage their cyber risks more competently. Risks are dynamic, and risk profiles in new technology are even more so. Needless to say, the risks arising from digital threats are multifaceted. The ability to keep pace in this new digital landscape is no mean feat, and perhaps self-insurance coverage such as captive insurance, is an ideal option to manage and mitigate these risks. Indeed, captive's technology provides a more flexible and innovative solution and offers the ideal vehicle to incubate these risks. It is a unique concept and can be structured according to the needs of the business or according to the characteristic demands of the risk being mitigated. And of course, Risk managed and mitigated by captive insurance can be applicable to other increasingly pervasive risks, such as biodiversity losses, natural catastrophes, and business interruptions. After all, captives have proven itself as a practical tool in fulfilling the gap in the insurance marketplace in respect of new and emerging risks in new and emerging frontiers. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just say, Labo and IBFC, uh, in our view, is a fast-growing risk management center in Asia. This is evident by the fact that it is one of the financial centers in the region that has incorporated the most cap entities, captive entities in 2017, and more than 60% of the premiums are not Malaysian-originated. Uh, in fact, a total of six captives were approved by Labo and Financial Services Authority and the total of gross premium of US dollar 316 million was underwritten last year. To date, uh, we have about 47 captives approved by the Labuan FSA, of which four are new approvals just for this year. All of these were from Asia, and we certainly hope that this positive trend will see us through the rest of the year. We also note that these four new captives were actually the total number of captives we put on for the whole of 2017. Now, Labon IBFC offers a wide range of captive structures, well tailored to the various needs and strategies of corporations in managing the risks, from pure captive to rental captive and protected cell companies. And indeed, we see the importance of the use of PCCs, as we call it, and we have specially arranged a dedicated presentation in this conference to discuss the uniqueness of this business structure and how well it will benefit Asian businesses. It is also worth noting that Labon IBFC is the only jurisdiction in Asia that offers PCC and Sharia compliant captives for those who prefer captives to be governed by their Islamic principles. Indeed, Labon IBFC is the first jurisdiction in the region to establish such structures. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, in addition to the clear, supportive, and business friendly legal framework and industry guidelines provided and enforced in this midshore center, Lab 1 IBFC is also a substance enabling jurisdiction and provides for the functionality to future proof captive insurance entities. This, as you know, is a key challenge for captives moving forward as the pressure and changes from multilateral organizations bear its influence on how the businesses of captives is conducted throughout the world. As such, the conference will discuss also substance creation as availability of substance will be a key determining factor in the feasibility of a captive, especially its choice of domicile, again, in this age of internationalization and transparency. So on that note, without taking any more of your time, thank you once again for coming and participating in this conference, and I wish everyone a successful and productive conference ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yang Prabhupada.